Welcome to another video from Guaylao 60. Today, today we're going to be talking about uh, how are women treated in China? What's their role in China? I had a, a comment on my uh, on my channel here yesterday, actually last night, with somebody asking me how are women treated in China, and I started to write back and you know saying oh they're treated good this and that and then I got about halfway through the not even halfway through what I wrote didn't explain anything didn't explain it to the point that it made any sense and I thought well you know this is deeper than just writing a response to a comment on the on the on the channel so I figured that the only way to answer the question was to make a video about it I've got a little bit of experience in this. I've seen I've seen a lot over the last 14 years, or just over 14 years. And there's not just one answer to this question. There's like four different answers, or probably more than four different answers, uh, depending on if you're urban, rural, educated, uneducated. Uh, you know, let's start with the rural, the old China. Well, the old China, women have one role, get married, have children, take care of those children, uh, take care of the husband, the husband works, the wife stays at home, sort of like the 1950s in the West. But it's more complicated than that because people in rural China didn't want girls. They wanted boys. Why is this? Well, there's no old age pension in rural China back then. There's no uh, nobody to take care of the old people. So what they want is a son that carries on the family name. Not only carries on the family name, but stays with mother and father in their old age and, and takes care of them. You see, when a Chinese girl gets married, she moves from her family to her husband's family. Not, not just moves there, but becomes part of the husband's family. That doesn't mean that she's not still the daughter of her biological mother and father, because they are her parents, but she lives and takes care of the family, the husband's family, not, not, not her biological parents. So when a son is born, uh, he stays with the family, he gets married, his wife moves in with mom and dad, and in their old age, the the wife takes care of with 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 the husband, of course, takes care of the old the old people, uh, and that's just the way it is in rural China, you know, the, more of a traditional role. So, why would you want a girl when that girl isn't going to? help take care of you in your old age. Only a son and the son's wife will take care of you in your old age. You know, so there's really no benefit to having a girl. The girl goes to a different family and takes care of your husband's old mother and father type thing, which is, I guess, good for the, for the husband and uh, the husband's parents, but not good for the, the, the wife and the wife's parents. So you can see that in rural China, having a daughter leaves you without anybody to take care of you in your old age because China has a one-child policy or had a one-child policy up until last year. You know, so the idea that uh, an old couple, they have a daughter, ooh, this is bad. What are we gonna do when we get old? Who's gonna take care of us? And, that, and that's a dilemma. If you're a girl brought up in rural China, you, you're, you're raised by your mom and dad. You get married. You go to your husband's parents' home. And that's where you live. Uh, your, your job is to take care of the house, take care of the cooking, take care of the old people, the, the, your, your husband's mother and father, have children, and uh, that's about it. You're no longer part of your own biological parents' family. And this is one of the reasons why Chinese, rural Chinese people don't want to have a daughter. They want to have a son. So there's a lot of abortions 
I'm not going to say that after a child is born that that they they dispose of the child. I'm sure that that's happened in in some areas, but I don't think it's a common thing. Maybe it was, but it's not anymore. Uh, the son, if you if if you have a son, well, that's a good thing because that son stays with the mother and father throughout the mother and father's life. There's somebody there to take care of them in their old age. Uh, there's there's no. I guess old person safety net here in China so if you don't have a son because one child policy you uh, you don't have anybody to take care of you in the old in your old age so the son gets married has you know the, the wife in the in the house and the children in the house and when the old people get old not only do they have the son and the wife to take care of them in their old age but have the the grandchildren to take care of them in their old age and they all live together which is, I guess, good for the husband's family, parents, but not good for the parents of the daughter because the daughter moves into the, the husband's family, into their home, you get old, there's nobody taking care of you in your old age. So you can see that having a daughter is probably one of the, the worst things that can happen to a rural family in China. In their minds, uh, things have changed a lot in the past 20 years but I've been hanging around rural China a lot in the last 14 years and I see the same thing where they don't want to have a daughter they want to have a son when they have a when they have a son there's a celebration when they have a daughter there's no celebration there you see a lot of times in rural China like say Bo Bai for instance where you know the whole community has a last name Liao um, if you if you if you're a son you're not going to marry somebody from your community, uh, Liao, how do you know that there isn't some family... <laughs> you don't want to be marrying your third cousin or anything. Let's go, let's go that far. So chances are you're going to, chances are really good that you're going to be marrying a girl from a different village or community other than your own. Uh, just, just to make sure. You know, so when, when that girl from that different community she she marries you she moves to your community to your family so she's not with mom and dad anymore she's even in a different community which is you know so it's not just uh, moving uh, you know across town it's moving from one community to another uh, so you can see that if your mom and dad and your daughter gets married she's gone she's not uh, she's not in your life daily life anymore so you can see why having a daughter is not a good thing because who's going to take care of you when you're old it's it's you know she's she's not she's not going to be there anymore so i was at uh, a wedding in yulin and i made a, a video actually i made a couple of videos about it uh, the wedding feast and the wedding and uh, the daughter was a cousin of uh, my sister-in-law so we're family and you know once you're in the family you're in the family well you know during the ceremony mom and dad were just happy 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 and and you know the feast and everything but you know after the daughter moved to her new husband's parents home the next day you could see the grief that they missed her really bad you know and we were there for a couple days afterwards and there was sort of a black cloud over the family uh, because there was the you know the mother the father and the daughter that were living in the home now it's just the mother and father and the daughter is gone to the husband's home the husband's parents home you see they have a house and uh, they had one floor that they had made for the for the son and her and her wife so they don't live in the same area of the house but they live in the same house you know so the idea that their daughter's gone and you know the daughter had been with them probably for about 25 years I think that's uh, about how old she was you know and now she's gone and she's not coming back you, you know she's she's got a new family and that's the way it is so you know I, I saw that they were not happy the next day and they knew that they had lost something. The rules change considerably for the urban Chinese that have been, uh, you know, in the city for 
a generation or two. Uh, to have a daughter isn't the end of the world. Uh, because if you're, if you're in the city, there's a different mindset. Uh, the daughter gets educated, marries her husband, they move into their own home, not the husband's parents' home, most of the time. And they help both the husband's parents and the wife's parents, you know, both financially and, uh, you know, physically if, if it's needed. You know, it, it, just, it just makes more sense to have it like that. And it's more like the Western world, unless it's a rural person that just has moved into the city and then they have the views that the rural people have and you're back to the wife moving into the husband's family's home uh, you know having uh, well in the city and it's into the same apartment you know how, how, do, how do the women feel about uh, the way that they're treated in China do they do they think it's good bad or are they indifferent See, and each girl that you would ask, or each woman that you would ask, would probably have a different answer to the question. My wife is pretty traditional. She comes from uh, an urban setting, but has the values of maybe half urban, half rural. Uh, her father came from a small town, village, Bobai, China. It's uh, about two and a half, three hours outside of Nanning City. When, when we got married and we were, you know, our, our courtship was, what, 14 days and she was in Canada and then another 15 days and we were married in Canada. And I noticed that, to begin with, well, even today, she won't let me take my plate off the table and take it to the kitchen. Um, she doesn't let me wash dishes. Uh, in China, she allows me to, to eat and drink and go sit in the living room and and no laundry none of this stuff i'm okay with that but you see in canada because we're not in china she lets up a little bit and uh you know i do a lot of the cooking i'll do dishes i'll do laundry you know back to the western way where both share but when we're in china she feels that because she's in her own country, her own culture, that she reverts back to the way that she was brought up and taught, where the women do that type of work. You know, so it's 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 weird. I'm telling you, like it's uh, you know, she changes from one person to another as soon as she enters enters China. So I guess it's that deep seated background that that makes them look at the world in a certain way and the way that they were taught and that's the way that they act when they are in China around their parents around their friends and their family members they they deal with things differently when they're out of China well they're more willing to grasp the Western way rather than the than the Chinese way or the, the way that they were brought up so I like being in China because I have to do absolutely nothing. So what kind of jobs do, uh, do, do women have here in, in China? Well, you know, they've got the traditional jobs. Uh, waitress, low-end job. Um, nurses, you know, a fairly good job. Uh, you know, working in shops, in, in, in the stores, like uh, my sister-in-law, Dung, she's, uh, she sells clothes in, in, a, in parks and it's a, it's a a big mall downtown Nanang City. You know, they have the more traditional jobs that you see in the West, you know, uh, the ones that, if you see predominantly uh, female workers in shops or restaurants or nursing, you know, things like that, that's where you'll find most of the females working in China. Um, sure, they're in business. Sure, a lot of them work in banks. I, I, I know that uh, all of the banks that I deal with, you know, they're, their front-end workers are female but I think that's the same in the West where you get into the banking uh, scene and, and most are female too you know and they're working their way into the business uh, you know the high-end jobs engineers doctors there's you know there there's more doctors uh, female doctors now than there was 10 years ago 
noticeable amount. Uh, you know, so they are slowly creeping into those higher end jobs. Even even today in uh, the the business world, you know, there's not too many women in. I guess power positions in the business world in China. That's still dominated by male bosses, I guess is what you're going to call them. And you know, it's going to be like that probably for another generation or two in China because the mindset here is just a little different than it is in the West. As, as you can probably see by the way I'm dressed, the weather has changed here in Nanning. Today is only about 15 degrees and it's cold. I'm, uh, I'm not happy about that because I love hot weather. Anyway, if you like this video, comment, subscribe, push that like button, share. Thanks for watching. Until next time, bye now. You know, if you don't agree what I'm, with what I'm saying, you know, I can, I can understand that. Everybody's got a point of view. Uh, you know, and I, and I think that constructive criticism is a good thing. You know, if everybody thought the same, this world would be a boring, boring place. But when you cross a line and, you know, white pig go home, uh, you know, F you, uh, you know, stuff like that, you've crossed the line and I'll delete you. Not only will I delete you, I will delete you from my channel from ever being able to post again. When you post, you might see your post on your computer, but it'll never, nobody else will ever see it. Uh, you know, so I like to keep it clean. You know, as I say, constructive criticism is, is acceptable and, and uh, you know, I, I like that. You know, if somebody doesn't agree with what I say or thinks that I've made a mistake, I do make mistakes, educate me. Uh, other than that, if you're, if you're going to be a troll, you're going to be a hater, delete. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye now.